Welcome to our online worship for the third Sunday after Trinity. Today we are wrestling with one of the harder stories in the Bible and we're thinking about the bigger picture of how God has been with people throughout the unfolding story of history. Through all the confusing and difficult times, we find that God has been with us in different ways. So I invite you to join in as we travel this journey together. We pray the collect for today. God our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, starting at the first verse. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its thorns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord Will Provide. As it is said to this day, On the Mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our reading today from the book of Genesis is one of the more disturbing stories in the Bible. As Christians, we sometimes hit this problem of God occasionally being depicted, usually in the Old Testament, as being manipulative, bloodthirsty and cruel. How do we reconcile this with the gospel message of God being love? 
Well, unhelpfully, part of the answer is that not everything has a neat and clear response. And perhaps we should not be trying to make passages like this one seem reasonable or comfortable. But there are two things to consider when we read this story that might help to make it more understandable within its context. Firstly, we should consider the world that Abraham lived in. Religions at this time were full of vindictive gods who demanded blood sacrifice. Abraham would have been familiar with the practices of people and religions surrounding him, which did require the sacrifice of their children. The gods were thought to be angry and in need of placating. What better proof of loyalty and worship than to give to God the thing you held most dear? Surely, people thought, to do this would mean that the god had to listen and would do what you asked in return. So when God asks Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, it was a common practice in Abraham's context. So this is a story of God asking Abraham to do something that was normal for God to require, and Abraham accepts the demand because perhaps it seemed inevitable. That was just how the world was. But despite being quite disturbing, the story which unfolds then demonstrates how different God was, that Abraham's God was not like all the other gods. Secondly, we must consider the Bible itself. Christians have a variety of views on how we should approach the Bible, from taking every word as literally true, to seeing it as just a story containing moral teaching. However you think of the Bible, something important to remember is that it was written by a variety of human beings in a whole range of different contexts and eras of history. Every person who wrote part of the Bible was on their own journey of figuring out who God is and how God interacts with us in the world. It can be helpful for much of the Old Testament to think of these often alarming interactions as being the best human attempt to explain how God made sense to those people at those times in that context. Perhaps it helps to think about us today. For example, if we pray for someone to be healed and they do get better, we see that as being God at work. But someone without faith simply sees that the medicine did its job. So as Christians, we weave God into our stories from our own perspectives. It's the same with the writers of the Bible. So perhaps this story of Abraham nearly sacrificing Isaac is a way of exploring how Abraham's God was not the same as all the other gods. In this way, it might even be a story of compassion, of provision, of mercy and love. It's a new, different story of a new and different God. None of this is to say that God asking for a child to be killed makes any sense to us now, no matter how the story ends. But our heritage of the Bible, in all its diversity and strangeness, means that we hold these stories together alongside our own, as we journey together in our understanding of God. This is why faith requires discernment. Even today, the Bible is used to argue for many varying positions on all sorts of matters. So the question for us is, what do we believe the gospel message to be? Jesus came to bring a new commandment and a new covenant, to love one another. And our short gospel reading today is all about welcome. So in our world today, with everything that's going on, how might we offer a welcome to all people? How might we model the open arms of Jesus' love as we journey in our faith together, as we discover where God is in the world around us? Amen.
let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we remember your provision to Abraham, we thank you for the different ways you meet our needs. In a world where many go without, we recognise with gratitude how fortunate we are and pray for your provision for those in need. We pray especially for those who are worried about losing their job in the current economic struggle. Please protect them and their families and stir the hearts of those who are able to help. We ask for your reassuring presence to be with employers. Grant them your wisdom as they face difficult decisions. God, who created each one of us to be unique, we bring our divided world before you in prayer. We thank you for those who are speaking out against racism and injustice. And we pray that unjust systems would be overthrown. Prejudice would be eradicated and that we would be filled with love and compassion for all of your children. We pray for leaders around the world as they govern at this time of unrest and uncertainty. Guide them as they make decisions which impact so many and may they know your presence with them as they continue to navigate the many unknowns which coronavirus has brought. As lockdown measures are eased, we pray with newfound appreciation for those we love with whom we can be reunited. Yet we recognise that for many with health problems, this is a time of trepidation and fear. May your peace flow into the lives of all who are fearful and we ask for your help as we seek to protect those who are most vulnerable. In a moment of quiet we think of those known to us who are in need of your help and presence this day. We pray for healing of the sick, peace for those whose earthly life is ending and comfort for those who are grieving. Heavenly Father who welcomes us into his presence and hears all our prayers and petitions, receive those concerns which lay heaviest on our hearts and fill us with your spirit that we may live and love joyfully as we journey on. Amen. As you continue on your journey through life, may you know the presence of God with you through all the ups and downs, in the hard places and in the joys. And now be in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.